And now, it's time for Southern California's Sports Fishing Voice. Let's talk hook up. For the next two hours, join Pete Gray, Rock Cod Rick Maxa, and this week's special expert guest for fishing information, new techniques to catch more fish, and the most current scoop on what's happening in the water. Let's Talk Hook Up is sponsored in part by Yamaha Outboards. Reliability starts here. By Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hook Up. And Shimano Rods and Reels. Fish with the best. Shimano. Get ready for the fastest two hours on radio with the hosts of Let's Talk Hook Up, Pete Gray and Rock Cod Rick Maxa. And welcome to Let's Talk Hook Up. I'm Pete Gray with Rock Cod Rick Maxa. We're back in the Mighty 1090 Studios with the guys from the Make a Wish Tuna Challenge. Ken and Brad are here, and we're going to be talking all kinds of fishing. And let's guess what? It's biting. There's going to be tuna to be caught at the Tuna Challenge. And we'll talk all about it. Stay tuned. Let's Talk Hook Up on the Mighty 1090. The new Shimano Torium HG is here, and you'll be able to experience this fantastic reel now at your local Shimano dealer. The new Torium is up to 30% smaller than the previous generation, but still has the same line capacity. The smaller S compact body design and one-piece die-cast aluminum frame provides more rigidity and lighter weight. Torium now has EI surface treatment and is tested up to 700 times the corrosion resistance of past models. The new Shimano Torium HG is not only better on the outside, the inside is amazing with a cross carbon drag providing up to 24 pounds of drag pressure from a star drag reel. It has a sealed roller clutch and 6.2 to 1 brass gears. The machined aluminum handle has a larger knob to make it easy to crank in the big fish. The new lightweight aluminum spool gives you better casting and control. Available in three sizes, the Torium HG is the next evolution in compact, rigid, and powerful saltwater star drag reels. Get it now at your local Shimano dealers. Great boats, free parking, and a fully stocked tackle shop. Just a few of the reasons Seaforth Sport Fishing is a favorite among anglers. Come aboard top charter boats like the Aztec, Cortez, Endeavor, Eclipse, Apollo, Outer Limits, Pacific Star, El Gato Dos, Alexis Pride, Privateer, Tribute, Pacific Voyager, and the Voyager. Plus, the new Seaforth Sea Watch in San Diego offer the finest half, three quarter, and full day trips available. Check out the full service tackle store at Seaforth Sport Fishing, and it's all run by fishermen for fishermen 1717 Quivera Road just off Mission Bay Drive in Mission Bay book online at seaforthlanding.com my angler H2O I will scent my lure with pride and hope my boss doesn't notice the tan I will outmaneuver drought exposed sunken boats and outlast the hard fighting largemouth bass I will save water at home for better fishing out here and always Always wear my life jacket. What's your H2O? Tell us at BoatCalifornia.com. The California State Parks Division of Boating and Waterways reminds you to wear it, California. Summer has finally arrived, bringing warmer waters our way. And you know what that means. The offshore fishing this season could be one of the best ever. And speaking of best ever, have you seen the new 2015 Ford F-150? It's the most advanced F-150 ever. Ever, which is even more good news for fishermen. One of my favorite features is the available 360 degree camera. It lets you see everything around you, which really comes in handy when you're trying to launch on a crowded dock. It's also the first truck ever to be built with military grade aluminum alloy. That means the new F-150 is up to 700 pounds lighter to accelerate faster and stop quicker. It also hauls more and tows more. And get this, it does it all more fuel efficiently. I highly recommend taking one out for a test drive. The new F-150 is the best thing to happen to fishermen in San Diego since the barbed hook. So stop by your San Diego County Ford dealer today. They'll be glad to hook you up. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hook Up on the Mighty 1090. You nailed it with that intro, man. And you want to talk about tuna fishing. It is happening. Tuna what, fishing, what, what yeah. It's time to have the tuna challenge, boys. In yeah, here. You, now... You went out after the show. Right. Yeah. And uh, with Jim and Mary from Poway Valley Collision. And yeah. did you catch anything? We did. Yeah. We had a really fun day. It was very, very cool. Good yellow. It was like an afternoon it. by the time you got out there, <laughs> it, it, right? It was, well, you know, it was a late start. But it was gentleman, a gentleman's launch. Gentleman's you know, we always say. Yeah. Yeah, it was fun. Or it's like, really... like, like, like Dave Hansen would say. It's like he, he left uh, real early, like 9 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. By the time we uh, breakfast sandwiched up at Dana and got some... Uh, Got some bait and headed out the receiver. It was a, a late start, but you know what? The fish are close, and they're hungry, and they're biting, and the late start was no deterrent. We had an awesome day and very good yellowfin tuna fishing. We 
put a picture up on our Instagram and Facebook page of Mary with a nice yellowfin tuna from yesterday. Oh, sweet. We had good fishing. It was close to home, and they were very willing. We found a little bait stop in the morning. We uh, had a little plunker that stuck with us for a little bit, and then we uh, we, we kind of committed to trolling lures after that, and it was good. It was a good time, man. We had a lot of fun, and yeah. clickers were going off, and the fish were coming over, and the fish were biting the colt sniper good. You know, finds little spots Excellent. of jumping, busting tuna, and fire the colt sniper into the spots and hooking them that way. And it was just, it was a fun, fun day of tuna fishing, and so close to home. Dude. So it's just, close. It's crazy. To home. It's just crazy. Seventy miles from Mission Bay. It's seven miles from the mouth of the oh bay. Oh my gosh. It, It's just and and you gotta love that and kind just of spots thing. of tuna up yeah. all over the place. Not a little bit too. I mean. You know, you look around the boat, there's a spot over here, the spot over here, the spot over there. Okay, that one's the closest. Let's run to that oh, one. Oh, jeez. Crazy. you got to love yeah, that, very, guys, very right? Very, very fun day. So the breaking news is Steve Pazel plugged the boat. So wait, I was going to say. you say plugged the boat? You he, mean literally he, put a plug in a hole? No, because no, no. He actually caught fish yesterday. Done. He, he, got, he was full. He <laughs> headed <laughs> right for on, Fisherman's Pazel. Processing by uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. That's awesome. Yeah. So that, now. You know it's biting if he's catching them. It's wide. Yeah, it's it's really wide. wide. Yeah, for sure. That's cool. Way to go, Hazel. Yeah, nice job, Steve. And, guys, you've been sampling this uh, great stuff. Ken and Brad from Make-A-Wish. Good morning, gentlemen. The boys. Yeah. So, Make-A-Wish Tuna Challenge. For those of our listeners who may have been had their head in the sand for the last few years, tell us about the Make-A-Wish Tuna Challenge and what it's all about. Well, the, the Make-A-Wish Tuna Challenge uh, was, I think this is our 26th year this year, uh, was started. It was a, a small tournament, and it was a fishing tournament, and they were trying to decide what to do with uh, the money that was raised, and, and the Make-A-Wish Foundation was, was chosen. And this is just after a very few years of the tournament, and it's grown from, you know, a tournament that raised six or $8,000 a year to raising – you know, in the hundreds of thousands of dollars cool. every year. So really, really. How much money did you raise last year? It was uh, <clears throat> just over two hundred fifteen thousand. Oh uh, that's my! So cool, you guys. It all, it all awesome. goes to Make a Wish San Diego, so it all stays local. It all stays local, and it, and it grants and uh, yeah. wishes, right? So we go to it goes to the Make a Wish Foundation, and you know, I'm a I'm a pediatrician, so I get to see this on both sides. I get to help raise the money, and then uh, I get to see the kids that benefit and few kids that I, I take care of every year get a get a wish. Um, uh, so kids um, that have a life-threatening illness, um, they can put in a wish. And the nice thing about the, the wishes is it doesn't just go to the kid, it goes to the family. And so when the kids are struggling through some illness, um, what happens is the whole family suffers, the parents, the siblings. And so it's like it, it allows them to pick something where the whole family can go out and enjoy you know, doing something really neat together that they can remember. And I've seen the power of the wish where sometimes I think on kids, I just didn't think we're going to survive. The, the kids got to go do something so awesome with their families, and it got them through their illness. Wow. You know, and other times, you know, it's it's awesome. it's not the same outcome, but the family has something really positive to remember. They spent some great times together with their kids. So it's yeah. really, really an awesome thing. Oh, yeah. Ken, it's, it's, it is a, a, the whole thing behind it is certainly – uh, a, a group of uh, Southern California anglers getting together and going fishing, but it's more so about the make a wish and, and, and doing good things, right? It is. And I think, you know, when you have the, you know, when you're at the banquet and you guys have both been to the banquet, there's usually a family and a kid yeah. that gets up to talk. And that's, that to me is always like, it's more important than who won the prizes, yeah. but listening to the family and the kid and, you know, and it's, it's always, uh, it's, it's very awe inspiring. It wants you to just, go out there and work harder and you know help help the cause oh yeah so yeah pretty but, neat. but speaking of prizes brad i mean my gosh yeah, yeah, giving away a car this year a new car <laughs> no, that's, that's not one of the prizes for the tournament that's a raffle okay um but yeah mazda one of our major sponsors has donated a car i think this is the third year they've been doing that wow um, we sell raffle tickets for that it's they're ten dollars a piece but if you are the lucky winner, you get your choice of one of the Mazda cars, either a Mazda 3, a Mazda 6, or the CX-5. Wow. That's pretty That's crazy. impressive. For 10 That's bucks. For, for 10 can, bucks. For 10 bucks. Yeah. And 100% of that money goes to Make-A-Wish. Yes. Yeah. 100% of all the money we raise goes to Make-A-Wish. It, we're made up of a uh, totally volunteer committee. Right. Uh, so so your big salaries are basically zero. You, <laughs> you for this, for this right? yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. That's really, and I know you guys put a tremendous amount of work into this, giving back to the community. This is really, 
that, that, that's really a great thing that you guys do. Year after year, you put – I mean, you work all year long on this tournament, right? Yep. Once we, once we finish one year, we start planning the next year, and, and you're right. It does take a lot of work, yeah. um, and there's a lot of people involved, but everybody does a, just a stellar job. So what's it going to take? What's what's the what's yeah, no the what's gonna, who's going to win? It's That's it's it. the big fish win, yeah. right? Yeah, nor, you know, if you want to win the thing, normally you're like, uh, you know, it's going to take a 50 pounder, or a 60 pounder. And I was thinking last weekend, oh, maybe I can get like the big tuna for the for the uh, one, for the Marlin Club <laughs> this year. I get like a 70 pound bluefin, and then you know, Mark and Skeet with their their. There are 130 and 180 pound bluefin. I'm like tough to beat. That's there. that's yeah. gonna be tough to beat. It's so. up on our website, by the way. That <laughs> yeah. picture of their epic day. Yeah. That and was speaking of, of Skeet, uh, the job site supply, big donor this year, right? Title sponsor. There, there are title sponsor um, again this year, and with you know without our sponsors, we don't have a tournament. So yeah. our sponsors are, are very key for this. Yeah. How many boats you anticipate? Um, well, it kind of depends on what happens with the rest of the bite and, and probably the weather, too. Yeah. Um, we Last year we had, I believe, 68 boats. Um, as of right now, or the last count, I think we're up to 54 boats. But we usually get a lot of people signing up the last week or so. But they're close. So you heard that seven miles. It's seven like miles. just get out there, sign up, participate. You know you can at least catch fish. Think about those years where you had to go like 70 miles, you know, to catch five pounders. And, seven, you know, in bad weather. Bank. I mean, even in bad weather, you're only going seven miles. Yeah. Go out, Remember catch Remember that year fish. you won with your dad, right, uh, Marty? It, oh, that yeah. Was, like, was that big eye? Was that? Um, we, won, we, we went back to back. We caught a big eye. We were the only ones to catch a big eye, and we got it on a Rapala, and then – and then the, the the big bluefin were biting, and we got three out of the five off of a plunker bite and got three, you know, 60 to 80 pounders. So that was pretty bitching. Cool. So everybody's invited. Anybody can participate in the Make-A-Wish, right? Oh, yeah. Any, um, anybody can fish it. Uh, you just It's a it's private boat tournament, um, although we do have a six-pack division, a charter boat division. So if you don't have a boat, you can always rent one of the six-packs and, and get in the six-pack division. That's great. And uh, how much does it cost? How does one enter? All the details on that. Um, well, I'd, I'd tell people to go to the website, which is tunachallenge.org, because you can get all the, the rules, all the information, and sign up. Um, the registration, our early bird registration, just ended end of July. So the price did go up a little bit. I believe it's now $105 per angler. Per angler. Yeah, it's not a per boat, but it's a per angler. Yeah. And, and how, what does that get you? Is it entry t- tournament entry per angler? It gets you into the tournament. Uh, get you tickets to the awards gala, which is going to be on Sunday, the August uh, 30th, okay. uh, which includes a lunch, and that's where we have the raffles and and all the awards banquets and everything. give away the car, we give away the car at the banquet at the award ceremony. Yeah, and uh, and just being a part, all that money, all the all the proceeds raised are going to go to Make a Wish to Make a Wish San yeah. Diego. That's Where's correct. the uh, banquet going to be? At Silvergate Yacht Club. Oh, They're our so host nice. again this year. Very nice. And if you want to enter, uh, you could also enter at the captain's meeting the night before. You can enter right up to the, that to the end of the captain's Friday meeting. Friday the 29th. Yep. Because Friday the 29th, the captain's meeting is going to be at Silvergate uh, at 6 o'clock. Registration starts at 4. Right. Yeah. So for the fair-weathered fishermen that are waiting for the weather, to, you can wait till the last moment, you know, and just and get enter. in there. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And you can have just one angler on your boat. You can be the only person if oh, you want. Okay. Kayaks? Uh, we yeah. don't have a kayak division. You could register, but you're going to be in the small boat <laughs> division. Well, yeah. you know, as close as the fish are, you know, you could just paddle right out there on the Hobie Mirage. I saw some guy in a Zodiac out at the 267 last weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, I was running for a spot uh, uh, of tuna yesterday and had to compete with two guys in two separate jet skis oh, running, jet at, running at the same spot. <laughs> <laughs> nice. yeah. Well, they could, they could enter, too. Yeah. We do have two different divisions. We have a larger boat and smaller boat division. Okay. So if it's... Under 27 feet, you're in the small boat division. If you're over tw- or 27 or over, you're in the larger boat. And what do you win? Uh, we have five places for each division. Uh, the first place prize uh, for each division is a, a trip to one of the Van Warmer resorts for Very two people. Good. With Palmas uh, de Cortez or Playa del Sol. Yep. Um, wow. yeah, they're, they're one of our good sponsors. Always give us a couple trips for that. Oh, yeah, that's um, awesome. We have a bunch of fishing tackle, rod reel combos. And whoever gets the, the grand prize, so the person who catches the biggest fish, no matter in what. In either division. In either division, gets the uh, the grand prize, which is a six-day, five-night trip to the Grand Alaska Lodge with wow. three days no of fishing. No way. Wow. Three cool. days of fishing. Fantastic. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a good, good, good guy. And it's always a great, fun prize, great uh, 
fun group of people that get together, and the, the banquet's always a lot of fun. Banquet's a hoot, even if you don't yeah. go fishing. Go spend the 15 bucks, get some food, and, and hang yep. out. And there's and, and beer gardens. And you have a lot of raffle prizes. Yeah, a lot of raffle, raffle prizes. prizes. Silent yeah. auction, live auction items. Yeah. Um, it, it, it just keeps going. Fun times. Yep. Cool. Well, as you can hear, we have a great show lined up for you today. Talking tuna today, the tuna challenge, make-a-wish tuna challenge, and uh, we're going to talk all kinds of good stuff. Yeah, today. I'm sure we're going to be looking forward to hearing some great fish reports with all this great fishing that's going on, just all kinds of great info. And if you want to be a part of the show this morning, we would love to hear from you. There's two ways you can do that. And first right now is with our local line, which is 858 area code 457-1090. That one is open right now. Again, 858 858- 457 1090 open right now or reach us toll free. Our toll free number is 877 792 1090. One more time, 877 792 1090. And there is a toll free line open right now. That's your chance to get through and talk some of the tuna and have some fun with us today. And not only are you going to get to be a part of the show and talk to Talk to Ken, talk to Brad, get in all this great information. We've also got a great prize for one lucky caller at the end of the show today, and that's a three-quarter day trip aboard the San Diego out of sea force sport fishing with Captain Ryan Boston, who again saw fantastic fishing yesterday. It just blows me away the type of fishing that those guys can put together on three-quarter day trips. You know, I mean, great, great tuna fishing, Dorado, yellow, it's, it's just happening Right now, three-quarter day at a Seaforth, and one lucky caller is going to get to go experience that great fishing going on right now. When we come back, we're going to be taking your phone calls. Lots of great information coming your way. You stay tuned. It's Let's Talk Hookup, Southern California's sport fishing voice. It's Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. Get it all at Dana Landing in Mission Bay. It's truly the one-stop shop for a great day on the water. Looking for a fishing charter? Dana Landing had you covered with several boats, including the new Blackjack, perfect for two to four anglers, and the Impulse that will carry up to six anglers in comfort and style. Dana Landing has a huge tackle shop with everything you need to go fish bay bass, tuna, or marlin, plus expert anglers on staff to help. They even have Mexican and California fishing licenses and reel repair. The deli at Dana Landing is a local's favorite with all the food, ice, and beverages you need. When it comes to freshwater tackle, East County Bait and Tackle is the spot for a great day on the lake. The ultimate in rods and reels, the latest freshwater lures and live bait. ECBT has a staff second to none when it comes to sharing their passion for fishing. ECBT is at the end of the 67 freeway on Maple View in Lakeside, and Dana Landing is right across from SeaWorld next to the Dana Launch Ramp in Mission Bay. Check DanaLanding.com for more details. Have you ever imagined casting a fly or a lure on one of the most beautiful and productive rivers in Alaska? At Katmai Lodge, you can catch up to all five species of Pacific salmon. The king, sockeye, chum, pink, and silver salmon, along with rainbow trout, arctic grayling, dolly varden, and other native stream fish. When anglers dream of trophy salmon and trout, the Alagnac River is their destination, and Katmai Lodge is the premier base camp. Being the original river-based lodge on the Alagnac gives the facility a leg up on the competition. Both experienced and novice anglers have rated Katmai Lodge and its knowledgeable guides as the best of the best. Katmai Lodge is remote, yet offers all the amenities of a first-class lodge. During your Alaska visit, you'll see amazing wildlife, brown bears, caribou, eagles, moose, otters, and much more. Schedule a day trip on their private De Havilland Otter Float Plane and visit the world-famous Brooks Falls. Book online at katmai.com or call one 800 330 0326. That's catmy.com or call 1 800 330 0326 for the fishing adventure of a lifetime. When it comes to tackle storage, it's got to be Flambeau with several new products designed just for anglers. Check out the new H2O soft tackle system, now available in three sizes, complete with tough tainers, the finest plastic tackle storage containers with Z Rust, which has proven to be the best protection against rust and corrosion. Flambeau Tackle System's new AZ Tackle System has flexible designs to match your type of fishing. And for travel, protect your rods with a tough bazooka rod carrier. Flambeau, available at Turner's Outdoorsman, Sports Chalet, and other fine tackle retailers. 
When it comes to fishing rods for saltwater, there's just one name you need to know, Calstar. Take, for example, the Graphiter series. It's a true graphite and fiberglass composite rod, the finest that's ever been built. And for anglers seeking traditional performance, durability, and quality at an affordable price, the Calstar West Coast series of rods and blanks are the ones for you. Their master craftsmen bring decades of rod building experience to every rod they make. So if you want your fishing rods to be truly state-of-the-art, I always recommend Calstar at fine tackle stores everywhere. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup. On the mighty 1090, phone lines are packing up. Again, if you want to get an opportunity to go fishing aboard the San Diego and get in on all the fun times we're having today, 858 area code 457-1090 or 877-792-1090. That's your chance to get through. Indeed. Talking tuna here with the guys from the Make-A-Wish Tuna Challenge. Let's go ahead and jump into the phone. You got it, man. Well, they're getting packed up. We're going to start it off this morning with Don, who's calling us from Woodland Hills. Good morning, Don. Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Hey, good morning, guys. Thanks for taking my call. Hey, yesterday I, I heard you talking about uh, the chunk fishing, and, Rick, I saw your post uh, from yesterday on uh, the live bait situation. And my question is, I'm going out on the Pack Queen this week uh, on a two-and-a-half day. How would I practice the chunk technique on a sport boat? Ken? Yeah, well, I don't know. Uh, as far as pra- practicing, I just do it. And we, we were out last week on the bait bait stunk and and most of our bait had died by midday but we you know we chunked a chum and we chunked a fish and we got we got one really nice fish on the chunk and all the fish i cut up i think at least three of the fish had chunks on their stomach so they're they're attracted to it and they were and they actually ate it so you just you know when i fished a chunk locally i just you know bury the hook in there and just let it fall free fall you know that's the key thing is you got to strip enough line off your you know your reel so that the chunk actually looks naturally and it's just falling through the zone and and you can get fish that way johnny white had a great explanation yesterday on our broadcast live from dana landing is putting it in the rod holder doing it uh you know east cape style Mm -hmm. where you just put it on the clicker and just pull the line off the tip of the rod and it falls more naturally yeah Yeah. you have to pull that off on a sport boat but like you know both both cases are saying you just you don't want you don't want just the reel and free spool and line coming off of the spool because you don't want to create that drag which is going to pull the chunk closer to the boat instead of making it fall with with all the others but you know the beauty of going on the pacific queen is you have a giant boat with tons of bait and you probably won't need to worry about it on a trip like that so I would say, and and to fish the chunk, you know, I mean, the boat has to be actively fishing it. There would be a a need for you to do so, or or a want for you to do so, because they have been biting them. But the most important thing is having all the chunk in the water, having that chunk line, you know, and and keeping it fairly consistent, you know, so that fish gets in that line of chunks and works their way up until your hook baits. You know, it's not the type of thing where you would just put a chunk of sardine on in a bite and expect a, a bite. You know, they'd have to actively be chumming with chunks and. Fortunately, in your case on the Queen, you guys have such a large bait capacity. It's probably not going to be an issue. I, I would just fish a live sardine on 30-pound and, and call it a day. But you say, yeah, you were saying that you're, the fish you caught were just you cleaning them and loaded with chunks. Huh? Yeah. No, I, I always do a, I call it a post mort exam. The, <laughs> uh, the <laughs> autopsy. The doctor that you are, right? <laughs> yeah. The medical exam. Yeah. yeah. So Brad, I, do you do that, too, being a doctor, too? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We want, you got, we want to see right? what they're eating. He splints, yeah. their, uh, he splint their wings. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, they were they were eating the chunk, and so at least uh, at least three of the fish had them. And and uh, you know Brad's brother is like fishing the chunk. He says, oh, he says my chunk's getting nervous. And then the <laughs> next thing you know, the line's ripping off. I don't know how nervous can a chunk get? <laughs> I like that. How <laughs> he knew. Getting nervous. Yeah. I, I will say that too. You know, the fish that we caught yesterday, we didn't catch them on the chunk. We caught them on the live sardine. Our fish earlier in the morning and. Uh, but um, when that fish was up getting close to gaff, it, I know um, at least one of Mary's fish that she caught on the live sardine, when it was up getting close to gaff and shaking its head, it coughed up a couple of chunks. So, I mean, that fish was certainly on us eating the chunk. You know, and we had limited live bait to throw to chum, but we had plenty to chunk. And so it at least kept the fish around it, and we picked them off on the live bait, but certainly kept the fish around us with it. So There you go. It's uh, You know, it works. Yeah. I mean, for it a, works. in a private boat scenario, it, it works really good. You, you said it best, Pete, when you uh, – about taking an, an extra five-gallon bucket full just so you have chum and chunk to throw in the skiff, and that's you, you don't need a whole five-gallon bucket though. You no, know, no, like yeah, half, you're right, you're right. Like you, a, yeah, just to be clear, uh, no, yeah, like exactly. a half a good bucket point. is more, way more, probably a quarter of a bucket right. is probably enough. You, I, I, I should have said put bait in a five.
five gallon bucket. Yeah, in yeah. a five gallon bucket. Yeah. But you don't need to fill. Yeah. No, yeah, good you don't need to fill. That's a lot of scoops. That's a lot of scoops. Yeah, that's a lot of scoops. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot of chunks. Yeah, yeah, you're no good. doubt about it. All right, thanks a lot for the call this morning. Let's go live to the clips. Cam Mark Gillette's on the line. Good morning, Razor. Hey, good morning, guys. How you doing? Hey, hey doing Mark. terrific. Wow, what a what a week of fishing, huh? Yeah, well, the whole fleet here is putting together a nice weekend. Uh, we had a good day yesterday. We went and ventured down below the border to see if anything was moving up, and we got real lucky on this charter the first day. It limits the elephant tuna down there and some big, big old Dorados down there. So we we uh, came back in last night, got some bait, and uh, came back out here to the bluefin grounds, and we're having a real nice morning here. started in the dark on a big big spot of bluefin, and we've been drifting all morning since. And we've got that secret weapon. What's that thing called? Uh, slot balls. That's right. we got them things. <laughs> and secret those weapon. Those things have really revolutionized uh, how we fish out here. And I think it's the big key here for either, you know, you're fishing your 40 to 50-pound bluefin or you're fishing those 150-pound bluefin uh We've been using those bigger size flat balls, the big ones, real big ones. The new two, really two hundred, really, really well. two fifties, right? That's awesome, Mark. Well, how how unbelievable a fishing you guys have been having, and 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 you're right, man. That that jig is there's, it works really, really good. I mean, what more do you say about that flat fall other than it? I mean, it it's it it it. They really eat it good, like crazy good. Yeah, really well. So yeah, I I would have to say the. Uh, all but maybe one or two fish here we've got this morning have been hooked on the flat fall. Um, I've been fishing a flat fall, hooking and handing here, and I've been fishing 300 pounds. You know, so it gives you an advantage. Oh, crashing on the valve. Uh, wow. It's, it's <laughs> Hopefully that's fish crashing. Sorry yeah, about that. I know we're live on the air there, but um, this is this is pretty neat fishing. Uh, Commander had a great day out here yesterday. He had limits for his for his guys and. Uh, you know, this great of fish, you know, don't let it deter you with the two fish limit. I mean, you really don't. I mean, how much you can you eat of this fresh, you know? It's a beautiful 40 to 50 pound with an occasional 60 and 70 pounder in it. Oh, that's awesome. Man, man. that Good just sounds guys. incredible. So if somebody wants to go aboard the Eclipse or the Commander, uh, are you? do you have any spots available? Uh, there's some spots available on the Eclipse through fishermen or through uh, sea force sport fishing. Um uh, their um, open party trip through the landing, and then on the commander, he's got trips leaving, I think, tomorrow night. He's out on a three-quarter day today, um, and then, of course, later in the week. So a lot of open party availability on that boat, and, and uh, we welcome everybody to be our guest aboard there and come check out our operation with our new RSW fish holes. Yeah, and the commander out of Fisherman's Landing, just a, a great beautiful operation. Boat. It's a beautiful boat. You guys did such an amazing retrofit on that boat, and it's now it's – top of the line and and you guys with uh make a wish you're uh giving away a prize thanks to the generosity of of, of chris and mark right that's right it's going to be in the yeah, live I, auction yeah a live a, I, sh- I believe so yeah what is it i believe so it's a uh, i'm can, not sure this year i like chris handle all that do you, do you know what it is <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a uh, it's going to be on a live auction, but it's for you and 24 of your friends to take out the commander for the day. No, no what? way! It's like a your full own charter. charter. Oh, you wow, can, you can that's pick, cool. You can pick your mates. Wow, that's, that's awesome. pretty generous, Mark and Chris. That's really generous of you guys. Well, you want to go on two phenomenal operations: the Eclipse out of Sea Force Sport Fishing, the Commander out of Fisherman's Landing. Uh, we can just book it online, right, Mark? Yeah, you can book online if you guys are interested in charters. Give me a call. There's uh Good dates available still for uh, the commander and uh, some of the uh, October dates available for the eclipse. So come on out. Love to have you all out with us. Beautiful That's week awesome, of weather. Man. I jump on that commander tomorrow. Oh, uh, doubt, yeah, <laughs> right away to get on there. Thanks, Captain Mark Gillette, aboard the eclipse. Get in the bluefin right now. Appreciate the call this morning. Thanks, guys. All my, right. my favorite part of that report, and obviously you did a great job, and he filled us in, and this is what's going on, this is what we're catching, but as soon as that bluefin was crashing off the bow, you could tell like he was 100% focused yeah. on something else. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, it was awesome. Yeah, yeah. Like, you could hear the second that happened, it was like, uh, uh, yeah, yeah and fishing is good. <laughs> like, yeah. You could tell it was, it was on. He was in yeah. fish mode from that. And it shows you what good guys those guys Absolutely, are. Absolutely. Donating a whole charter on the commander, which is, I mean, I'm telling you, they did such a, my boat's right, right near there, and I oh. see it every day, and it's just a beautiful, beautiful boat. I mean, 
you nailed it. They, they didn't need to do that. That's a charter out of their yeah. pocket that they're not going to get. And, and hats off to them. That's right. That's yeah. a cool, and that's going to bring a lot of money for for an auction, which is all going to Make a Wish. I mean, that's yeah. the the whole the whole thing. That's that's killer. Good that's job, you guys. That's for sure. Well, hey, let's head south to the East Cape. Mr. John Ireland from Rancho Leoneros on the line. Buenos dias, John. Good morning, Pete. Rick. Hi, yes. John. What's happening? Well, well, we got the Bisbee behind us. Um, you know, it's. It's too bad it wasn't two weeks ago. That said, it was it was a pretty good tournament. Did you we win? A nice fish, no, but we did okay. We did okay. We released a couple stripers and uh, and had one nice blue on yesterday. And uh, and but he was about two fifty, I figure, so we let him go. But uh, close anyway. We felt like we were in it yesterday, anyhow. Uh, the area that uh, we ended up catching our fish is where the winning fish was caught, just not not too far away from us. There were uh, 62 uh, billfish released in the tournament, for, and it shows you the percentages now of, uh, of uh, blues and blacks to stripes and sales. There was 40 blues released, four blacks, and only 13 stripes and five sales. So it gives you kind of, you know, preponderance of blues and blacks out there. But had they done it three weeks ago, we could have put up even much, much better numbers. It wasn't as good as it, as it has been. Our largest fish was 409 pounds. And uh, paid a good check by $366,000, 532 How about that? Wow. That's yeah. How many boats yeah. in the tournament, John? 62. Nice. The tournament. Yeah. It's, last year, I think they had 63, so right about the same as uh, last year. Uh, second place fish was 389. And uh, some big elephants came in as well. The, the biggest elephant, listen to this, 170.3 pounds. Uh, picked up sixty thousand four hundred and seventy. How about that? Nice. Yeah, I'm making some impressive. money on the game fish too. That is impressive. Well, was it local guys that caught them? Guys coming in? Uh, you know, I have the name of the winner right here. Uh, Jack uh, John Peelman won from Fresno. Oh, okay. Uh, he would have got the first, and then a local Augustine Pino was got the uh, from uh, San Jose del Cabo caught the biggest uh, tuna, which kind of holds the uh, locals are ruling the big tuna area, you know. I think that they, these guys ran all the way down to Gordo, and we're, and we're fishing squid on Gordo is the word. Ah, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Up. Yeah, second second place uh, tuna was 156, and keep in mind that those were daily jackpots, so that, that 60 uh, was a one-day jackpot, and that was the second day of the tournament, I believe. And uh, and then the uh, because this was the largest fish and no qualifying dorado, I guess what the qualifying fish was thirty pounds for the dorado and no qualifying fish, so that uh, the large tuna got the rollover for the uh, dorado as well. Nice, so, wow, yeah, 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 yeah. And the rest of the fish is pretty good. The uh, we've got a lot of yellowfin off the front of La Rivera there. Jigging, if you can get to sardine, sardine's working really well. If not, jigging iron is uh, picking up some nice shell tub between 5 and 20 pounds, but uh, quite a few of them just on the first bank there right off the front of La Rivera. Uh, we were going out there and doing that, using jigging and then picking up them for bait and then going out slow trolling them and using them, uh, the yellow, smaller yellowfin as, uh, as live bait. And that's what we're fishing with. So there are a lot of those around. Uh, good rooster fishing, good inshore fishing. There's usually a lot of pargo and uh, uh, good inside fishing as well. So, but the biggest story for the last month or so has been the bill fishing, though. And um, that continues, like I say, pretty high percentage of blues and blacks compared to stripes and sails. So, so that's mm -hmm. kind of interesting. Nice. Well, if somebody wants to come down to Rancho Leonero, man, the best months to come, you know, August, September, October. Great Good months fishing. for fishing down there. How do we get a hold of you? You have space Thanks. available. Yeah, we do have space available through the next three months. So it's 800-646-2252 or ranchlandero.com. All right. Thanks, John. Good report. We'll talk to you next Sunday. You bet. Look forward to it. All right. Appreciate that very much. All right. Well, that does going to jump right back into the phones. Toll-free line is open, 877-792-1090. Let's talk to Doug, calling us from Montebello this morning. Good morning, Doug. Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Yes, this morning. How are your uh, tournament uh, fi finances through the entry fees? It's through uh, through entry fees and also through our sponsors. We get a lot of donations, uh, cash donations, donations in kind for prizes, things like that. So it's it's all the, it's all about the donations. Yeah, because uh, and nobody that works for Make a Wish Tuna Challenge gets paid. No, it's no, all one hundred percent volunteer. One hundred percent volunteer committee. Yeah, and we re we raise a lot of money um, through the raffles and things like that. And we have our cost of doing business, so we have to we have some bills we have to pay, but everything else. 
All the uh, other proceeds go to Make-A-Wish. So like last year, you just wrote a check to Make-A-Wish for $215,000? Yep. Yeah. Wow. That, so that was cool. af- guys- yeah, after expenses. After so. expenses. <laughs> yep. That's impressive. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. Really cool. Hey, thanks a lot for the call this morning. All right. How about next up, we talk to Kenny, who's calling us from La Jolla this morning. Hi, Kenny. Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Yeah, good morning. Uh, I just want to know, did you guys uh, see any bluefin in that seven-mile range? Uh, us yesterday, we didn't know everything that we saw was straight yellowfin, but had, you know, very good buddies who were fishing yesterday in, in uh, call it similar areas, you know, w- certainly within 20 miles of the point. They were up above us a little ways. They had a nice blue fin, and certainly guys around similar things. Um, my buddy Neil, who I fished with, was on a kelp paddy yesterday that on the one kelp, they had yellowfin, bluefin, dorado, and yellowtail all drifting really? off of the same kelp, you know, and and lots of fish around in the same thing, so... I, I mean, I would say definitely it's around also. Sounds like maybe a little bit more bluefin is up above us, but, but I, I mean, I wouldn't be the least bit surprised to run across a bluefin school right in that same zone. There was tons of life, tons of whales. It was just a it was a really good air. When we were fishing that little plunker, you know, Jim Jim was driving the boat, you know, the whole day and, and kept looking over his shoulder every time because, I mean, there was, a, there was a, a number of blue whales in the area, which I've never really seen before. I mean, not, not – three or four at a time in a tight little area. It was pretty cool to watch. I mean, Lots of some, some of them were close, like yeah. like close to the point where like, man, I hope that thing didn't get too much closer. <laughs> you know, he's pretty, that's a big animal. So. Pretty neat to see the largest creature on Earth that, yeah. over and over again. Awesome. Yeah, Absolutely Kind of awesome. one of the bonuses of going fishing. That's it, man. Yeah. That's why we do it. But, but uh, yeah. a, a, the uh, bluefin thing, it's all kind of mixed in, yeah, right? But really there is. seems to be like, like Razor was talking about, he went south and it was mostly yellowfin, and then he went north across this side of the border and uh, bluefin. So, so it's, yeah. a, it's a smorgasbord. It's where you find it. Yeah. yeah, pretty cool. Hey, thanks a lot for the call this morning. You know, uh, one thing I will remind you are the new fillet regulations, which pertain to both yellowfin and bluefin, all tuna, as a matter of fact. Uh, make sure that if you're not taking your fish into fisherman's processing like you probably want to do but that's what, that's what we you, did you've got to do the fillet the fillet job right ken you did that right? yeah i actually it was the first uh the first crack of course it changed like the day before you know we went fishing last weekend so um there's good and there's bad with with this so i used to cut fish when we get back to the dock but then you got to figure out what to do with the heads and i and i don't like dumping heads in the water close to you know in the marina because they end up floating after a while and somebody else is going to be mad at you so so we did the gutting and i de- decapitated medical term there <laughs> decapitated the uh, tuna so we you know gilled gilled and uh, and took the head off but left the fins left the belly of course then got back to the dock so the good thing is when you get back to the docks there's like hardly any blood and hardly any you know major mess and then i just you know cut the cut the fillets and then like with that process when you go to after you've you know done your fillets and and the gill uh, or not the gill you know the collar with the uh you know, with the, uh, with the, the fins on the, the side just comes off. Yeah. You can just, like, pull it off and throw that in the bag with the fillets if you have to. Uh, but I think once you're back at the dock, you can do whatever you want. And then all you're left, of course, is with the with the carcass, which is good lobster bait. Yeah. There you, go. you know, one week from today, we'll have Craig Heber from NOAA on the show. Uh, Craig is de- deeply involved in these blue yeah. regulations. We'll get more into that. But one thing you said, you said you decapitated the uh, the tuna head. But you must leave the pectoral fins. Yes. So you need right. to cut yes. in front of the pectoral yes. fins yes. to be legal when you're yes. when you're doing it. So let me ask you this: You do that at the dock. At what point uh, can you take the skin off? I, I was going to ask the same question, and, and I don't know the answer to yeah. that. But like, w- at what point do you, are you allowed to just you know completely fillet? Is fillet. it when you when your trip is over? Is when you at the dock? Is it when you're at the top of the dock? Is it when you're at your house? Like when? When do you no longer have to, you know, show skin and collar and fins and belly and I, and I, I don't, I don't know the answer the to that. I don't know, but I don't like to fillet with the skin on. But I like to pull the skin so I can look at the bloodline and see where I'm doing my cuts. Yeah. And so, so I, you know, I prefer to do it the way we did it. But, but uh, I have to imagine once you're on shore, you're you're legal. You know, I, to, I, would, I would think once your boat's tied up and you're no longer underway. I I would, some people well, live on, some people I, live on again, their boats. I would think so yeah, also, but I'd hate, I'd hate to explain it to a warden if you're tied up to your boat in the it marina does. and the warden comes down to the boat and says, what do you guys got, boys? And you've got nothing but Ziploc bags of tuna. You know I mean? They're, so I, I don't know. Maybe right. next Sunday uh, Craig oh, will have sure. yeah, yeah, excited when you But, but here's my thought. Lobster fishing. You cannot 
take the tail off the lobster until you're on shore, mm-hmm. right? You can't, when you pull your boat up to the dock, you cannot walk to the top of the dock and have tails in a bag. Right. Mm-hmm. So is it the same? Yeah, I, again, I, I, I don't, don't know. know. You know, new regulations, yeah. new rules. Yeah, new, so new we'll get some clarification so, yeah, from Craig Heber one week from today because uh, he's the man. Yeah, he's I, I, I agree. He's literally, yeah. you know, that's, yeah. that's the guy. He's the guy that did it all there. Cool. Let's go ahead and jump back in the phone. You got it, man. Well, how about this time we talk to Bruce, and Bruce this morning is calling from Lemon Grove. What's up, Bruce? Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Hey, good morning, guys. How you doing, Bruce? Doing great. Yeah, on the chunking thing, uh, my technique is just uh, let it free line in your hand, and once it really starts moving, it doesn't have a tail on it, so it's probably got a fish on it. So <laughs> That's it, yeah. That's good it's tip, like man. you say, a nervous chunk, getting, right? Getting like nervous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Chunk's getting nervous. Yeah, the chunks don't swim. That's so, right. Yeah. Put it and if, uh, I had a question for Rick on the on the long range trips on the fly down fly back. Who does the travel arrangements for the airline? Do you do it all yourself? I mean, I think you make your own reservations, but the boat will certainly assist you in you know whatever boat you're on assist you in times, and 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 a lot of times it's just hey you know mo- just so you know you're you're coming out of San Diego. Most of the guys are going on that Alaska flight, you know number whatever that that kind of thing. So, but no you. You you do your own arrangements. It's not the boat. Or you could certainly, if you needed to, you could call a travel agent and say, "Hey, I need to be in Cabo this morning, and I need to be out that morning." But yeah. but no, it's uh, the boat will assist you as far as letting you know what flights other passengers are taking. But it's on you. So for example, on our trip on the Royal Star next April, which by the way, believe it or not, still has spots available on the 11 day fly down no fly back trip. Really? Yeah, I'm pretty amazed. Yeah. But uh, just call Tracy in the office, and she'll kind of have the lowdown on. Which flights most guys are taking. They want you there usually on the early flight. Like Alaska Airlines has two flights out of San Diego a day and several flights out of other uh, cities in, 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 in Southern California. They'll usually want you down there early so they can get on the boat and go. Sure. Yeah, and not have to sit around and wait for a guy to get there at 6 o'clock or something like that. Yeah, thanks a lot. Gosh, your fishing time. So, yeah, j- jump on that and just call the office. They'll, they'll fill you in. Thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. Yeah, that's a pretty amazing thing that it never happens that there's uh, actual spots on that 11-day fly-down, fly-back trip. But if you want to join us uh, next April, pretty sensational trip and uh, pretty great time of the year to go fishing on the Royal Star, too. Easy. Bruce has been on our Let's Talk hookup um, 10-day and 12-day a couple of times and a lot of fun. And, yeah, Bruce, time to time to come with us again, man. It's too, <laughs> too, too good a time not to. There you go. All right. All right. Jump, uh, we're going to take a real quick break, and when we come back, we got a lot more Let's Talk hookup coming your way. we got more of your phone calls. we got catch reports coming up, all kinds of great stuff. You stay tuned. It's Let's Talk hookup on the Mighty 1090. This is Captain Tim Ekstrom from the Long Range Vessel Royal Star. With my partners Randy Toussaint and Brian Sims, we have set the bar for the Long Range Fishing Experience. A spring 8-day, summer 5-day, or a fly-down, fly-back 11-day winter trip, we deliver the highest quality Long Range voyage you will find. From our premium RSW fish storage to our top-of-the-line chefs and crew, Royal Star distinguishes itself from all others. Want to grab a spot on the Royal Star? Check us out at royalstarsportfishing.com or call Tracy at 619-224-4764. Time to talk about great equipment from Shimano. We've got to talk about the new Shimano Torium HG. And you saw yesterday Mary Francella using her new Shimano Torium 20 HG. Pretty amazing reel. She kept saying the same thing. I can't believe how smooth this is. I can't believe how smooth this is. And they are. I mean, they're, they're, they're precision. The, the, the gearing is so smooth, and they make so much torque and really good free spool. At a price that we can all afford. It, it's just, they nailed it. It's an awesome star drag reel that fishes great. It fishes like a reel with a much higher price tag. And it's a smaller compact body now compared to the previous uh, you generation of Torium. Uh, aluminum frame. It's a die cast one piece aluminum frame, which makes it lighter and more rigid. It's got that EI surface treatment that tested up 700 times the corrosion resistance of the past model of the Torium. So check it out, the new Torium HG, a 16, a 20, or a 30 at your local Shimano dealer. 
You've made the investment in a boat, and you know how important it is to take good care of it. That's why you need Monsoon Yacht Service. Mark and his staff specialize in taking care of your boat and making it look its best. No matter if it's on a trailer or in a slip, let Monsoon Yacht Service clean and polish your boat to make it look like new. Monsoon Yacht Service also does fiberglass and gel coat repair, custom rigging, and the best detailing you have ever seen. Be proud of your boat again with the help of Monsoon Yacht Service. 619-405-2176 or check monsoonyachtservice.com. Alaska is one of the ultimate fishing destinations in the world. This is Rock Cod Rick, and every year the one trip I look forward to is Kingfisher Charters in Sitka, Alaska. My dad and I have been going for over 15 years, and I just can't wait to go again. No one does it better than Kingfisher Charters. They offer the best service, the most comfortable accommodations, fantastic food, the finest fishing charter captains in all of Sitka, and the ultimate value. Sure, I've been to others, but time and time again, nobody beats Kingfisher Charters. You can catch huge halibut like the ones we do almost every Every year and salmon well sitka is famous for some of the best runs in alaska we also get plenty of rockfish and huge lingcod and when it comes to fish processing the best in alaska is kingfisher charters and listen to this it's all included in your package in fact everything is included except the tips it's truly amazing how the kingfisher crew continues the quality of service they deliver year after year come and join me on the let's talk hookup trip in june or just go when you can kingfisher charters 800-727-6136 or check kingfishercharters.com. Esto es PRF 1090 AM Rosarito, Baja California. You're listening to the home of the Padres. Oh, right. San Diego sports leader, the mighty 1090. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. As promised, it's time for the catch report. We're going to find out what's biting, and I got a feeling this is going to be a very good catch oh, report, yeah. which today is sponsored by, I bet, again, some very busy people, and that's Fisherman's Processing in San Diego. You can get the finest fish processing while you wait from your local, your long range, or your private boat trip. And they have taken the San Diego processing business to new levels. They offer just such superior service, superior product, and innovations like pre-booking your processing order, handling skiff orders. If you're on your private boat and you're coming in after hours, they have that drop box where you can call and get a code. You can drop your fish off in a slush bin, and it's ready to go when you come back to pick it up the next morning. They have those great new tuna burgers. You can friend them on Facebook at Fisherman's Processing, or for more details, check Fisherman'sProcessing.com. We're going to head up to Dana War Sport Fishing right now. And talk to the man, Captain Brian Willie's on the line. What's up, Willie? Hey, good morning, guys. How are you? We're doing great. Good morning. Good, good. Hey, made our way through another another really good week up here at Dana Wharf. You know, some really good fishing for us. Uh, this, this stuff, I mean, everyone's all about this offshore stuff right now, and it's you know, it's showing some real good signs of the fish actually starting to uh, settle in up here. Um, some different areas have produced good fish for multiple days, which is is good to see. You know, we're not out you know, chasing stuff and trying to, to figure it all out every every day. So from day to day, we've been able to kind of get in some of the same areas and make some catches. Um, a lot of these fish in these areas, too, that, that hasn't bit. So it's good to see this stuff all in these, these different areas. You know, there's some stuff that's close to 10 to 12 miles and some stuff, you know, quite a bit further out than that. But another good sign we're seeing, you know, is this tuna is finally really associated with kelps now. You know, if you can find the right kelp in one of these uh, areas I'm talking about, you may have a good shot at some of this fish. Uh, Primarily yellowfin and dorado on these kelps. You know, the majority of the yellow cell that we're seeing on this kelp has been really, really small fish. So, uh, but this yellowfin has been solid grade, good mix. This stuff's been like 18 up to well over 60 pounds. Um, the dorado has been mixed in there as well. A lot of that smaller five pound stuff, but there's certainly been some shots of this 18 to 25 pound uh, dorado on there as well. And, you know, the deal with these kelps, if you can get on a good kelp early, you know, you can pretty much sit on it and make your day out of that one kelp. You know, we had one the other day. We were on it. You know, we just set up on it. We got a good five-hour drift on it. And, uh, you know, it just it worked out good for us. We're able to put a, a good count together. Um, along the beach there, this big yellow tail is still here and still showing good sign. Uh, a few boats this week, you know, came inside after catching their tuna and their offshore stuff. And we're able to get a good hit on uh, this nice grade of 25 to 40-pound yellow tail along the kelp lines down here. And uh, calico bass still Excellent. Phenomenal calico bass fishing. You know, we got a little shot of anchovy in our receivers yesterday, and we were out there, and uh, just the calico bass fishing was just on point. It was really good calico bass fishing on our half day yesterday. So trips online all week, guys, from half day to twilight to full days. Uh, I'll tell you, you can definitely get on a trip, but you need to just plan ahead by making reservations in advance. You know, the, the night before stuff's not going to work for you. you got to plan ahead a little bit. And on our three-quarter day stuff, uh, we're limiting the loads of 
you know, number of anglers on these trips, and these boats are now departing at 5 a.m. So plan ahead a little bit. Call the office. They can give you all the details and help you out with the reservation and stuff like that. The phone number there is 949-496-5794. Of course, you can check us out on the web at danawarf.com. And then on a half-day trip or, uh, you know, one of the, the local trips like that, you can link us right there through the Let's Talk Hookup webpage and save some money on one of those those close coastal local trips. Wow, good it. fishing, man. Well, uh, pretty amazing. And it just the beat goes on, and we still have three months of this fishing left, I would think, huh, Willie? Yeah, oh, absolutely. And then that's the thing, you know, the science is everything's coming together like everyone had, had hoped and, you know, kept their fingers crossed that it would. And we're just, you know, now it's time to capitalize and, you know, really make really make it worth, worth you know, making those memories for, for the year to come. Here. So we're, we're certainly ready for that. All right. Thanks a lot for the report. Fantastic. And we'll talk to you next Sunday. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. We'll talk to you then. Thanks, Willie. Appreciate that. It's time to hit the surf for the surf zone with our surf guru, Gundy Gunderson. What up, Gundy? Hey, what's up, gentlemen? How we doing? You know, with the offshore fishing so good, I feel like I'm trying to sell ice cubes to Eskimos <laughs> talking about the surf. But, hey, we still got the hardcore guys, Pacific Coast, selling 1,500 lugworms a week, so someone's going, you know. Another good week of fishing, guys. Excellent Corbina fishing. Sand crabs have dried up a bit, so other baits like fresh mussel, lugworms, bloodworms, go shrimp, all been working. So you, good idea to have a backup plan when you get down to the beach. Hook, line, sinker in Santa Barbara reported good perch action on almost all the beaches down there. Grubs, gulf, two-inch sandworms, cut anchovy. That's about the only place you're really finding any perch right now. A little cooler water, gaviota, butterfly, East Beach, all producing there. Best bet for how it has been off Galetta there, hard jerk baits. Wiley's in Malibu reported that this is the most corbina they've seen on the beaches there in years. Good quality fish, two to four pounds, taking lugworms, fresh mussels, and lieu of sand crabs. Uh, just fishing in Redonda reported excellent corbina action off Torrance Beach there, fresh mussel, lugworms again. Another striper taken there, 12 pounder off Formosa. The event of the week though was a school of tanker yellowtail. We're, we're talking 25 pound class fish were biting on the pier and moved into the harbor. And the report there from the shop was that they were ab absolutely ruining guys who were fishing the shore and the jetties and stuff. They didn't, didn't know what to do with that quality. Catch them tackle in Costa Mesa reported excellent Corvina action. Talbert, river jetties between the piers. Fresh mussel was the best bait there. Hogan's reported good Corvina bite. Poachies to the pier. Shop also reported firecracker, yellowtail, and bonita biting off the San Clemente pier also. Finally, Pacific Coast reported good Corvina action. Oceanside Harbor, Del Mar River mouth. That whole stretch is producing sand crabs. A little inconsistent. And again, bring a backup bait, lugworms, fresh worm, uh, fresh mussel, probably top choices. If you want to slurp some ghost shrimp and go for some bigger models, that's a good idea. But very good fishing overall. And most of the shops uh, reported that <clears throat> it was uh, more fish than fishermen. So that's what you're looking at in the surf this week. you got to love that, man. Lots of fish. I mean, you got to talk about warm water off the coast. It's warm water, and that means corbina and... Lots of good fishing. So, Gundy, yeah. thanks a lot. Great report. Sure appreciate that. And we'll talk to you next Sunday. You know, a neat sock of Pete is uh, I wasn't even able to get through to the shops yesterday. I had to call <laughs> them back at closing time so I could get my reports report. from them because all I could hear was line winders whirring. There you go, man. <laughs> yeah. Any, just any, yeah. If you need something done. <laughs> Get in line, right? <laughs> yeah, great time for these small shops, it's man. Amazing. They had it coming after a few tough years. So. You betcha. Nice All right, to gentlemen, you. have a good week. Thanks, you Gunny. Too, Gunny. All See right, you later. we're going to continue with our catch board. We got a bonus. Captain Art Taylor from the Searcher is on the line right now. What's up, Art? Hey, good morning. Unfortunately, I'm not on the boat, but uh, Aaron uh, is having some fantastic fish. And yesterday, a combo of uh, bluefin up to 40 pounds and Yellowfin up to 40 pounds, uh, good weather, and uh, so there's a, a chance for some quality fish. You know, the numbers um, aren't, you know, it's not wide open, but, man, you got a chance at a quality fish. It's some awesome fishing going on right now. Oh, that's fantastic, Art. I know he's on a, a five-day Braid product sponsored trip, right, with Dennis Braid. 
Yeah, four day. Yeah, so mm-hmm. yesterday they got uh, a daily limit of bluefin tuna there in U.S. waters, and and then finished the day off with uh, a stop on yellowfin tuna where they were biting a little bit, and these already got a few yellowfin tuna this morning, so. Uh, things are going pretty well so far. Nice. Now, I can't believe this, but Celia told me that you actually have spots on a three-day over the weekend, the last weekend in August. Is that true? Oh, no way. Yeah, August 28th. Yeah, it's uh, going to be a, a, a trip that's not going to be sold out, and it's, uh, you know, a light load, and so it's a great opportunity, and Fishing's good, so oh August. Yeah, that's and August, so it leaves on a Friday, comes back yeah. on a Monday. That's correct, yep. Three-day trip with availability on the searcher at the end of August. Are you kidding me? Right. How is it not going to get filled up? So how do we book that trip if we want to get in? Uh, you can uh, call Celia at the office there, uh, 619-226-2403, or you can book right online there at Searcher's Port Fishing. Dot com and a three-day trip now you're going to fish the first afternoon and two full days after that so it's a it's a good opportunity no doubt yeah. that's awesome Don't art jump on it though because i can't imagine spots are going to be available for that especially over a weekend three-day trip in the prime time end of august searchersportfishing.com thanks art taylor Thank you, Pete. All right. Rick. Appreciate hey. that very much. All right. Well, that's Let's go wrap. jump. Yeah, wrap up the fish for us. Right? You got it. And we're going to jump right back into the phones. This time we're going to talk to Mike. Mike called us from El Cajon. Good morning, Mike. Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Good morning, guys. Thank you for taking my, my call. I'm out here in the Coronado today. I'm going to try a little turf fishing uh, with the families out here. And I, I just want to uh, commend uh, the make wish you know, uh, for, for all that they do for the kids. You know, when you when you see the stories of of the kids, you know, and the, the the wish that they wanted, and how they grant these wishes and whatnot, it brings tears to your eyes. So I want to give kudos to all the people that uh, participate in this. Even if you don't want to go uh, fishing and you don't want to enter a tournament, you can always always make a, a cash donation and whatnot. Uh, they'll appreciate that very much. And I got one question for you, Pete. Uh, I'm, I'm, I put a call in for Captain Dave Hanson, so I'm hoping I get a hold of him, uh, he'll, and then we'll, we'll get him out on, on my brother's boat. But in the meantime, I'm wondering, how do you guys go about getting your different, your different, uh, headings or courses, like a 302 or, you know, different spots on, on the ocean? There's a website I can go to to download some different things. Fishdope.com has it all, right? Uh, what do you guys use? Well, to get my our, brain. Yeah, yeah. The, G, the GPS. The yeah, GPS. Yeah. Yeah, these days, you just plug it in, and it'll tell you where to go. Yeah. If yeah. you were looking simply just to get a heading to a spot, I really like those Baja directions charts. They're inexpensive. They're super easy to use. They're like 15 to 20 bucks, and it's a colored chart, but it has all the all the buzzwords, Mike, that you hear, the 302 and the 425 and the 43, and all, all those spots are, are, are listed on the chart, you know, with a – you know, other than just seeing the fathom contours are actually listed. You know, that's the 302, and and then right next to it there'll be a number associated to it, and uh, and that number you go down to the key on the chart, and it gives you the lat and longs um, for that spot, so you could plug it into your GPS, and then it actually gives you the compass bearing um, for you know the the direction you would travel from San Diego Bay, Mission Bay, or Ensenada to all those spots. So yeah, but the spot the the the, the 302 or the 425 or the 224, the the fish may not be sitting right on the Absolutely, bank. They may sure. be, not be around. And that's why I mentioned fishdope.com is because you can go to their chart, which is embedded into their, uh, the temperature chart, see where the warm water is, and then actually put a pointer on the fish icon where the fish was caught around that area the day before, and it gives you the Latin lawn where that fish was. Yeah, trust right me, there. I, I'm in agreement with you. If yeah. you're looking for fishing info, no no question. That, that That's the source for it. Yeah. I, I if just, you just want to go to a spot, use the chart. If you just want the, want the you compass want to bearing. Go to, yeah, you yeah. want to go But I, I like that. Use the you know use the clicker, and you get the Latin lawn right, right you there. Know, even if it's not on a spot, but it, yeah. it gives you a, a starting point to go right. for. And, and it might show you trends, too. You know, like you look at like all these all these marks where all these fish caught, they were all in the deep water on the backside of the banks or on the or on the shallow side or or this i mean you can you can certainly put the trend together you know like 
these were all in the hottest piece of water, or or the opposite. You know, look, there's a temperature break right here, and they were all on the colder side of water. Right. So it kind of helps put the puzzle together for you. Yeah, no doubt. And then I use both terrafin as well as fish dough because terrafin gives a real clear picture of the temperatures. And the same thing, you put a pointer on it, you click the pointer, and it gives you the Latin lawn. You can put different pointers on different spots in the warm water edges and stuff like that. And then you print it out, and the, all the Latin lawns are listed right down below there. Yeah. Which I, works out great. I agree. Or I, you can do the mobile that's thing. That's what I it's do. It's all right I mean, there on, I, your, on your mobile device. I, I, download the mobile, I download the chart to the mobile device. I take an iPad with me. I throw it in a one-gallon Ziploc, and that stays on the dash while, you know, while you're driving. And you can, you can basically turn the data off of your iPad, keep the GPS on, and you can watch the position of your boat moving in and out of. Now, granted, it's a shot from the day before, so it's not exact, but it is. Pretty darn close. Extremely close. close. I mean, we, yeah. we do it every time we go. Yeah, and there have been some really good four-star charts on, on Terrapin lately, so it's, it's been pretty nice. Yeah. So, hey, Mike, hope that helps you out. Thanks a lot for the call this morning. Hey, when we come back, we got a lot more Let's Talk Hookup coming your way, including another hour of your phone calls. You stay tuned. It's Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. Turner's Outdoorsman, Southern California's number one shooting, hunting, and fishing tackle retailer since 1971, is right in your neighborhood. Now 18 stores throughout Southern California and three in San Diego County. Turner's Outdoorsman brings you the best prices and selection, plus a knowledgeable staff that will help make your day on the water or in the field more fun. Stop by your neighborhood Turner's Outdoorsman. To find the location nearest you, check the web at turners.com and sign up for special deals and more. Many years ago, Baja pioneer Bob Van Warmer found the area he called the Great Fish Trap in the East Cape of Southern Baja and built what is now regarded as the premier East Cape resorts of Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol. Today, following in their father's footsteps, Bob's sons, Bobby, Chucky, and Eddie, have taken Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol to new levels with the largest sport fishing fleet in Mexico, a luxurious spa, and top-of-the-line resort amenities. Van Warmer resorts have become a destination destination for travelers worldwide. But for us, Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol are just a short two-hour flight away. No other tropical fishing destination offers the experience and value that you'll find at Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol. Now you can plan your Baja fishing vacation quick and easy by visiting VanWarmerResorts.com. And when you're ready to book, it's quick and easy. Or simply call 877-777-TUNA for more information. Van Warmer Resorts, the East Cape's finest. This is Greg Stotesbury from AFCO. For over 20 years, AFCO has been known for its traditional fishing shorts. We now will also be known for our new line of next-generation fishing and board shorts. Our new M82 tactical fishing shorts feature quick-dry, high-tech, two-way stretch fabric, zipper fly, six functional pockets plus pliers pocket, sublimated camo print, and our DWR finish so your shorts don't get stained. Also new to the AFCO line are the M25 Stingray board Board shorts. The Stingray board shorts feature new, quick-dry, four-way mind-stretch fabric, modern zipper fly, two technical high-cargo pockets with inverted zippers, silicone-printed draw cords, along with our DWR finish to repel stains. Both shorts are new to the AFCO line and come in a variety of colors and sizes. These technically advanced fishing and board shorts continue AFCO's long tradition of providing the world's finest fishing and board shorts. Check them out today at Better Shops Everywhere. XFRS 1090 AM Rosarito, Baja California. You're listening to the home of the Padres. Padres are playing some kind of baseball. San Diego's sports leader, the mighty 1090. Information is the key to success, and inside information is even better. When it comes to fishing, inside information is critical, and that's what FishDope.com delivers. FishDope.com really does help you catch more fish and save fuel. FishDope.com is the only SST service with a satellite oceanographic PhD on board, the only fish finding service with a spotter plane. You get daily catch reports from Point Conception to San Martin Island 365 days a year. FishDope.com boasts the largest largest code group anywhere, covering sport boats, commercial boats, and private boaters. Fishdope.com has online planning tools, moon phase, tides, hot bite icons, and more. What I'm telling you is, if you don't have Fishdope.com, well, good luck. Membership costs less than 40 gallons of gas for the entire year. That's right, one year. What a bargain. Plus, stay tuned for the special code to save $20 on a Fishdope.com membership. Check it out today. Fishdope.com. Catch more fish, burn less fuel. 
Fisherman's Landing has been the choice of sport fishing anglers for decades with the largest fleet of long-range boats worldwide. Complemented by Southern California's finest charter and open party fleet. Now is the time to book your long-range trips and charters, plus half-day trips aboard the Dolphin. Go to Fisherman'sLanding.com and see trip availability and even book your trip online. Stop by or call Fisherman's Landing in San Diego and book now at Fisherman'sLanding.com. Summer has finally arrived, bringing warmer waters our way. And you know what that means. The Offshore fishing this season could be one of the best ever. And speaking of best ever, have you seen the new 2015 Ford F-150? It's the most advanced F-150 ever, which is even more good news for fishermen. One of my favorite features is the available 360-degree camera. It lets you see everything around you, which really comes in handy when you're trying to launch on a crowded dock. It's also the first truck ever to be built with military-grade aluminum alloy. That means the new F-150 is up to 700 pounds lighter to accelerate faster and stop quicker. It also hauls more and tows more. And get this, it does it all more fuel efficiently. I highly recommend taking one out for a test drive. The new F-150 is the best thing to happen to fishermen in San Diego since the barbed hook. So stop by your San Diego County Ford dealer today. They'll be glad to hook you.